Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular City Council meeting of October 6, 2021. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Weir. Here. Council Member Arias. Here. Council Member Gonzalez. Here. Council Member Smith. Council Member Freeman. Council Member Gray. Here. Council Member Parlier. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. At this time, Councilmember Gray will offer the invocation, and following the invocation, City Manager Clegg will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. You'd bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a gracious and mighty God, and that you hold all things together in this world and in the city that we represent. I pray for each one of us tonight that are here that we would represent our city well, that we would make wise and discerning decisions, that we would have ears to hear, and that we would be a blessing to those that we serve. We thank you for all of those um, in, in office and that serve this city. We thank you for each and every one of them, that you would bless them, keep them, protect us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos for safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council on July 14th, 2021. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting, prevents the city council from conducting the business of the city. Consider this a first warning to everyone in attendance that conduct that disrupts this meeting may result in expulsion or, and or the chambers being cleared. Now it's time for public statements. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card, give it to the city clerk. Statements are given a three minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here on hearing items 10A and or 10B, now is not the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity to speak when the item is called later in the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Again, please avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, outbursts from the audience, surpassing the three minute time limit. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers? Mayor Go, a staff memorandum has been provided transmitting emailed comments. We have received two public speaker cards regarding separate subjects. The first public speaker is Curtis Bingham Sr. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Welcome, please introduce yourself. Oh uh, yes, Curtis James Bingham, Sr. Servant of our Lord and Savior, God Almighty Jesus Christ, who truly is the only begotten Son of our Holy Heavenly Father God. The Lord, tell us to bless our leaders. And so I'd like to say thank you guys for God we trust. When a person sees a city council person, 
they know that you guys are leaders. And when they see the mayor, our first lady, they see a leader of leaders. So the Lord would just like to bless you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. He didn't want to put you in the position you are, and the people have done the same thing. The Lord wanted to, to just bless you. And I'd like to also have you to remember, uh, when the Lord gives you leadership on earth, he's planning to give you leadership when he calls you home. We all got a day we're going to leave here. The Lord knows the date each one of us going to leave. He's planning for leadership for you in the mighty kingdom of heaven. Everybody here over here, same thing. You're in leadership, and the Lord just wants you to know that he appreciate what you're doing, and when you retire from your job, you're going to be proud that you're a leader in the city because you're doing a very wonderful, beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, I represent the Lord, I'm a, the Lord, and I'm a servant to law enforcement as well. And uh, that beautiful painting you have a person wants to paint for Bakersfield Finest, I just wanted to say I think that would be a beautiful thing, a good tourist attraction, a good thing for families to go sit and talk and think about all the things Bakersfield Finest has done for us. Another thing I like about it, uh, it doesn't cost very much to put up, but it's priceless. It's priceless. You know, we sit up and we see law enforcement, and uh, uh, something negative happens, they always got something to say. But people have to really, really seriously remember with their heart that the Lord would have us to, to is they have a job to do. And sometimes when they do their job, somebody come at you with a knife, a gun, a rock, a bat, a nasty attitude. And how are you going to handle something like that? You got to stand up and defend yourself and the city. And they do that. But here's the part the Lord is not happy with. A lot of people forget they have feelings. They got feelings just like us. They just have a job to do. And this world is kind of getting out of control a little bit and not respecting them for that. And this is why the Lord tells us, don't resist them. Do exactly what they say. That's in Romans chapter 13. The Lord knows if you do that, you go on your way safe, and they will too. It's the only thing the Lord is saying. Uh, when they come through, anything they ask for, you say any, anything, give it to them. Because everything they get from you is for us. When I come up here and as a servant for them, it's for you, it's for the crowd, and it's for the city. Law enforcement is for everybody. They do so many good things in the billions. And the only thing we hear about a few little negative things that take place, and the Lord is not happy with it because the Lord said this world is supposed to end because of evil. Well, who's going to take care of the evil while it's happening until the Lord come? Them. So we got to stick with them. And stop getting a little loud there. Uh, stick with them and do everything we can to promote them so that painting thing would be a beautiful thing to do and it would be priceless. So thank, thank you, you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Honorable Lady. Mayor, our first lady. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. Next speaker, please. The next public speaker is Marcy Cunningham. Welcome, please introduce yourself. My name is Marcy Cunningham, and I'm back tonight to keep the issue of no e-bikes on equestrian hiking trails before the council. We equestrians love the Kern River Parkway trails. Many trailer their horses in from areas where trailer, trails have been lost due to development and want to have a safe area where they can ride. Using the figure of 700 horses boarded along the Kern River between Golden State and Manor Street, I thought the council might like to know the economic impact these horses bring to Bakersfield. My best estimate is that it costs a horse owner a minimum of $3,700 to board and care for one animal for a year. My figures include public boarding, veterinary services, and hoof care. No extras such as trailers, trucks, or tack are included. Neither are emergency veterinary services included. Extended out, this amounts to $2,590,000 spent on horse care for 12 months just for the horses in this area. Any group that puts this much money into the local economy should be afforded a safe place to ride their horses. Allowing e-bikes on equestrian trails diminishes the safety of these trails. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, are there any other public speakers? Yes, our last public speaker is from Emma De La Rosa.
Welcome, please introduce yourself. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Emma De La Rosa, Policy Advocate with Leadership Council. Um, my comment is in regard to the American Rescue Plan framework. Thank you very much for releasing the framework. Um, I thought that the framework in and of itself is representative of community needs. I'm very happy to see that there are, that housing and transportation infrastructure is included in that framework. Um, I did provide a comment letter on additional re recommendations. Uh, for example, um, AC units and weatherization has been something that's been brought up by residents um, throughout this year because of the extreme heat. A lot of the folks in east and southeast of Bakersfield um, don't have the uh, um, in adequate um, cooling systems. Um, to keep cool, and so uh, we urge that AC units and weatherization also be included in the framework. Um, in addition to that, we've also heard of, uh, about the need for park it, pocket parks and community gardens, especially throughout the TCC outreach. Uh, that was brought up as a, as a community need um, to provide food and also a farmer mar farmer's market opportunities in low-income neighborhoods. Um, for business support, we urge that uh, funding be provided to minority business owners and um, that the funding be provided to folks in the form of grants rather than loans. Uh, for street enhancements and safe routes to school, uh, Casa Loma residents have asked in the past for support with street calming enhancements down Casa Loma Drive, uh, particularly for the street bumps. Um, there are also a few sidewalks in the city side of Casa Loma that, have, uh, that are raised and have caused mobility issues. Um, similarly, uh, residents of the senior apartments on, on P Street have also asked for ADA compliant sidewalks and have asked for street bumps because of the high um, velocity of, of cars driving through, through um, I think it's B Street actually, I'm sorry. Um, and um, also, Owens Primary School has also been identified as a as a area for the, um, who need the safe routes to school. Um, we did have a question about the about the um, personnel, direct personnel costs in response to COVID nineteen. We were wondering what exactly that includes, if it's um, the premium pay, and what what other um, city uh, exp uh, what other uh, city ex expenses are included in that. And for the broadband, we, re we recommend that community feedback is solicited so that um, the locations are based on what community members say. In addition, we do push for uh, further community engagement to ensure that moving forward, the uh, money is implemented in a way that community members agree with. And lastly, uh, we did send a letter um, asking, to asking the city council to rescind the rules of decorum. We have not heard back from the city council and we hope to hear back soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. De La Rosa. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thanks for bringing up the uh, concerns related to traffic calming. That is a theme that we hear about often um, throughout the city in various different neighborhoods. Certainly in Ward 2, I hear a number of um, constituents talk about the need for traffic calming treatments. Um, and um, a, a while back, I made a referral regarding a traffic calming toolkit or handbook for the city to adopt for us to have a whole host of different strategies to uh, calm traffic in neighborhoods. And so, uh, Mr. Clegg, can, can you give us an update for the full council of, of what the status is on that? Yeah, thank you, Council Member Gonzalez, and through the chair, an opportunity to provide an update on that referral. The city was pursuing grant funding through our local uh, council of governments to uh, be able to build out that planning toolkit for traffic calming. Unfortunately, we were not uh, awarded those grant funds and not selected, uh, but given the, we feel the importance and impetus, particularly as we're working on our streetscapes and, and building out um, many street repairs in the coming years, we're gonna go forward and uh, identify some uh, city funding out of our own funds um, and uh, continue to move forward in uh, soliciting proposals to do a traffic calming uh, toolkit before the end of this fiscal year. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Madam Clerk, next item, please. The next item is item seven, appointments. Six appointments to the Bakersfield Youth Commission due to the current regular and alternate vacancies for the mayor and ward two positions, and the ward three alternate and ward four regular positions. 
At the request of staff, this item is being removed from the agenda and will come forward at the October 20th, 2021 meeting and will list all applicants who applied for vacant positions. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item, please. Next item is consent calendar items 8A through 8AB for approval. A staff memorandum was received requesting item 8H be removed from the agenda to allow for further staff consideration. And an additional staff memorandum was received regarding item 8L, transmitting a signed copy of the agreement. Vice Mayor. Yes, thank you. Um, I have one request to pull item 8B by Council Member Gray. So I make a motion to approve items 8A through 8AB with the ex exception of 8AB. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion was approved with Councilmember Smith and Councilmember Freeman absent. Thank you. And now item 8AB, Councilmember <coughs> Gray. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak uh, regarding the Sports Village tonight because I understand this is a lot of money dedicated to one project. So I'm sure there would be constituents saying, you know, what in the world? So I wanted to bring it, uh, clarify it. Um, that where the monies are coming from and why we feel that this is good for our city. To start, no monies are coming from our general fund, so that should put everybody at ease. Approximately 50% of the funding comes from a dedicated funding source when new homes are built in that area. Housing starts have been up this past year exceeding our original expectations, um, and the fund grew more than what the village was originally budgeted for, from $11 million to $12,437,500. million to improve this village will come from PSVS funds that the entire city has paid into through sales tax, and another $3 million has been awarded to us from grants that staff has applied for. I do want to mention that we have invested $9 million into deferred maintenance and other par park maintenance in other parts of our city in this year's budget. It is of my opinion that this village will benefit the entire community. The new five football fields um, that'll, that will be added uh, in this um, in redoing this will be utilized by the Golden Empire Football League that has teams that will come from all over the city. I approve this project, not because it is in my ward, um, but because it is money well spent to invest in our youth that come from all over our city. So there's many, many children that are gonna benefit from this. We need to promote positive opportunities for all of our children, no matter if they're from the east side, the west side, the north side, or the south side, it doesn't matter, so that they can grow up being confident and well-rounded citizens. And we know as children are participating in sports and on teams, um, it, it, it helps in so many different ways when they become adults and begin to contribute to the cities that leave, they live in. So um, with that being said, I would just like to offer Mr. Clegg if he'd like to add anything to this conversation that may clarify this more because it is a big agenda item. Yes, thank you, Council Member. And again, through the chair, uh, you're correct uh, that this uh, project has uh, s several funding streams and just wanna reflect uh, first that that $11 million project was approved in um, the budget process already. So these are not new new funds, new approval. This is the awarding the construction contract. Uh, however, we did increase um, the amount uh, for two reasons. One, we had done some um, reductions to the overall project to make sure that it fit within that budgeted $11 million. Uh, but we actually received the bids back that were very favorable. And so uh, some of the construction costs were less than anticipated, 
we were able to go back and look at a couple of options that would uh, add a back a fifth field instead of just four, and also to address some traffic flow issues that occur within the sports village. And then lastly, uh, we actually were looking to put a water main in that area. And so there's a half a million dollars that's being funded by the water enterprise to build out its infrastructure, but leveraging this um, favorable uh, uh, um, construction bids that have come back. And so we've added some dollars to the project, um, but those are coming specifically from the water fund as well as they're coming from that dedicated park improvement fund specific to the sports village that, you know, that can't be used for any other use. So we think it's a great way to round out this project and address a couple of needs to take advantage of those favorable um, bid um, results that came back to us. Thank you, Mr. Clegg. Council Member Gray. I'll make a motion to approve uh, consent item 8AB. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion was approved with Councilmember Smith and Councilmember Freeman absent. Thank you. Our next item is public hearings. Each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers per side, so it's important that you identify yourself, make your statements succinctly so others may speak. We'll hear statements from those opposed to the staff's recommendation. Then we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of staff's recommendation. If there's testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the TV screens behind me which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone, identify yourself. After 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash indicating your time is up. Quickly end your statement. You may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be addressed until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk. She'll provide copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Madam Clerk, please read the first public hearing item. Item 10A, public hearing to consider resolution setting domestic water availability fee for service areas of the City of Bakersfield domestic water system. Thank you. Mr. Clegg. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Our water manager, Art Chanel, will provide a brief summary of this uh, item. I would note it's an annual process that we go through and, and Art could speak uh, a little bit to that process and our rationale for this recommendation. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the Council. Art Chianello, water resources manager. Um, the public hearing tonight uh, is to consider um, resolution or adoption of a resolution setting the domestic water availability fee uh, for service areas of the city of Bakersfield domestic water system. Um, per municipal code section 14.04120B, the water availability fee shall be established and adjusted annually for water service facilities required to enable the development of all areas served by the city water system. Such fees are declared to be necessary to compensate the city for the expenses incurred in furnishing sources, storage, and water distribution facilities and related capital project expenses. And I'll just say uh, just an example we had of where this uh, water connection, water available, availability fee funds is the $500,000 to uh, extend a water main through the, uh, the sports village. Uh, part of the master plan there is to extend our water mains um, from Ash Road onto Gosford through the Sports Village, which will provide a water main to support new growth in that area. Um, pursuant to government code section 66016, the city did do a public notification uh, regarding the hearing uh, for tonight. Um, uh, um, um, we, I just want to note that um, right now there's been no public comments um, received by either the city clerk's office or the water resources department. Um, we are um, recommending a 4% increase. The, water, the current water availability fee is $6,291 per gross acre. Uh, revised with a 4% increase, that will be $6,543 per gross acre or an increase of $252 per gross acre. Typically, we have four dwelling units per gross acre, so the increase equates to a one-time charge for development of $63 per dwelling unit. 
Uh, with that, that concludes my um, discussion of the uh, water availability fee, and I'll be available for questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chinella. At this time, I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? If so, please step forward and go to the mic, identify yourself, and proceed. This is in opposition to staff's recommendation. I'm not, not really opposed to it. Oh, okay. This but this I'm is gonna, for just, the opposition. If you want to support, we'll have that after. I'd like to see. I don't believe in uh, a good crisis going to waste. You know, I would put it come out. But I'd like to see some more added to it. I don't believe you're going far enough. Okay. But anyway, uh, Madam Mayor members of the council and staff, definitely staff. I am Dennis Fox. And um, even as we speak, there's a fire going on up at Johnsondale. And after the fire is out, you're going to have a lot of stuff that's going to wash into the Kern River. Now, when this goes into the Kern River, it becomes a um, kind of a contaminant, all the ashes and all that stuff. We call it being organic matter in the uh, drinking water. I think they should probably bottle it and, and take it to Costco and sell it as organic water and get everything else they got. However, the problem is, is that they're going to have to do something besides that water. Uh, there was a, a little idea was to uh, let it perk, put it elsewhere and let it perk. But the cost of uh, that water is going to go up because they're going to have to either get more surface water or they're going to have to get the more you pump, the farther down it, uh, it seems to go. And as uh, the water table drops, uh, it gets worse. Tomorrow morning on NPR, they're going to be talking about the farmers pumping a place dry and hitting basement. So the... Um, I, uh, I'd like to get into the truck. I think the costs are going to go up, and eventually we're going to hit a basement. And also, we're going to have a problem with subsidence. And you end up with cracked sidewalks for, to fix. And then there's going to be problems with people's uh, cement slabs at their house and their driveways needing repair. Um, where is this stuff going to go? is up to Isabella. Um, locally, Isabella Dam, which is the most dangerous dam in America, has been um, studied and studied and studied. The uh, Corps of Engineers does the studies. It makes the reservoirs for the farmers because uh, the Bureau of Reclamation has a acreage limit on who can uh, get their stuff. So uh, it goes to the Corps of Engineers. The last dam that the Corps of Engineers built was 40 years, um, years ago, called um, Teton Dam. They did not believe it needed a spillway put in an overflow pipe. Well, it kind of would have hurt to have that. The dam went, and several cities went on the dam. So they're doing studies rather than building dams. Uh, that may be able to be corrected. The main thing is a problem here is this is, a, oh, we're a conservative area. You keep hearing this. It's, we're conservative. 
We're not the conservative in which we have uh, do our own stuff, and uh, we are have a big case of waterfare. And whether how much I cannot overstress that, because even if it wasn't any um, s subsidies. Uh, as ammunition for people who do not want to see water come here. That's what I'm getting at. And it is its own reality. Um, okay, the, um, they have these zones of benefit, which I put in the packet for you, and which Urban Bakersfield is buying water for places 50 miles from here. And that uh, doesn't look too hot. It, it, the focus is on the subsidy, not on getting the water. And we are having a, we're going to have more of a problem, not only with people doing it, but concentrating any concentration on the subsidy takes away from concentration looking at getting more water and from various places. It's best put that we do not have a shortage of water. What we have is a shortage of innovation, unquote. So that is uh, the main things. The Corps of Engineers had uh, their da uh, reservoir up at Visalia. I recommend driving up there to see it. They widened the spillway, made a big spillway, filled it with structures that are hollow. Now, all reservoirs have an area, when you look at them, there's just dirt. There's no water there. That's in case there's a flood. In, up there, they put these things in, and if the flood comes, then they fill up with water, and they tumble down the, you know, the larger spillway. It uh, happened up there. They couldn't. They could not build a house up there in uh, that Visalia because they did not have an assured water supply. And now they have it. Now it takes care of that problem. Um, uh, other ones. I would not, when I talk about subsidies, there's, it's not a subsidy, it's innovation. And that would be gray water for housing. It's probably going to be coming sooner or later. The other one is uh, using reclaimed water. That is a nice way of saying uh, sewage water. And we don't do that for the people. We give that to the farmers, not as a subsidy, but it's a way to take care of that problem. And I would, uh, it uh, also has some little bit of growth stuff better too. So I would, in general, I think uh, we should do the, take a look. Uh, the Recharging of the water table was encouraged by um, AB 252. And I think it'd be nice if you take a look at that uh, next January and February when it's reintroduced. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in support of Steph's recommendation? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. Colleagues? Are there any requests? I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the resolution. You have a motion, please cast your votes.
motion was approved with council member smith and council member freeman absent thank you madam clerk next hearing item please under item 10b public hearing to consider a resolution for public right-of-way dedication within city of bakersfield property alongside a future park site on mountain ridge drive between berkshire road and mccutcheon road thank you mr clegg Thank you, Mayor and Council, Public Works, uh, our interim Public Works Director, Stuart Pattison, will speak to this item. Thank you, Mayor Go, members of the Council. Um, this item that's before you tonight is a resolution that will dedicate public road right-of-way for future road construction along a city-owned parcel that is designated as a future city park. Um, the City of Bakersfield owns property designated for a future city park on Mountain Ridge Drive between Berkshire Road and McCutcheon Road, adjacent um, south of the uh, Miller Elementary School, Panama PV School District. The property was deeded to the city in 2006 with the intent that it be developed as a park. The other two sides of the park are bounded on the west and south sides by future city streets. So the, the road construction itself will be completed by the two adjacent residential tracks developments, track uh, 7140 and track 7342, which are adjacent to the west and south sides of this parcel. Uh, this dedication is required prior to the developers constructing those roads. So staff's recommendation is to adopt the resolution and I'm available for any questions that may come up. Thank you, Mr. Pettison. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in support of staff's recommendation? So, please step to the mic. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. Councilmember Gray, this is in your ward. Would you like to, this is in your ward. Would you like to make the motion? I'll make the motion that we accept the um, resolution for public right-of-way dedication within the city of Bakersfield property. Okay. Thank you. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. Motion was approved with Council Member Smith and Council Member Freeman absent. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is 11 reports. Item A, American Rescue Plan Act framework. Thank you, Mr. Clegg. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'll be speaking to this item. If the uh, uh, clerk's office could pull up uh, for the screen the document that um, reflects the outline for the Rescu American Rescue Plan Act funding. So as just a reminder, and this are, these are in the you know, published uh, materials for the agenda, uh, this uh, act uh, established funding uh, through the federal government. Sorry, just... actually organized along with the nonprofit a, a monthly food distribution event uh, in East Bakersfield. Um, and I can tell you, uh, month after month, the lines have only gotten longer. Uh, so the need is great in our community. And I think it's important for us to really seize that opportunity with, with these ARPA dollars to, to think about this strategically and really make an impact. And um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm excited about the future conversations, but I'm gonna be looking at this with a very sharp eye at how each and every expenditure will actually uh, work towards moving the needle in some of these indicators that we've talked about for years but finally have an opportunity to, to address. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Colleagues, anyone else request to speak? Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, no, I appreciate the list you put together, and it sounds really good, but it, it's just a framework. And one thing that, that concerns me is that 
for all the years I've been on the council, there's maybe three years that we didn't worry about water. And so as this moves along, here, here's an opportunity with some one-time money to really set out a framework and some innovations for water and uh, prepare for the future because I don't know that we're going to get a lot of rain next year. So if we could do that and adjust things around, that would be, that would be very good. Thank you. If I may, Vice Mayor, uh, I, that's a, a, a great point. That this is a framework. We anticipate there's going to be adjustments to this because there's a lot we still need to hash out and figure out. And I think uh, suggestions around the water is uh, a good one. We've been trying to identify eligible projects to leverage there, but you're right. Uh, that is a very high priority for the city and we'll continue to explore more options for how we can use these one-time funds. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anyone else requesting to speak? Motion to receive and file. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion was approved with Councilmember Smith and Councilmember Freeman absent. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item is council and mayor statements. Are there any requests to speak? Councilmember Arias. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to lift up some voices uh, from the community. I've had some ongoing conversations since uh, we've had a new player come into town, uh, uh, preventing, uh, providing a great opportunity for many in our community to utilize um, some of these scooters and, and non-automotive forms of transportation here in our city. Um, and I think it's a fantastic opportunity to get around. I personally have uh, utilized a couple of those services and, and thoroughly have enjoyed my experience uh, with some friends. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity for us as a city. Uh, however, I have had some conversations with some folks in the community, uh, specifically our, our uh, as I like to call them, our handicapable community, uh, who have had some challenges getting around our city, um, you know, trying to maneuver around uh, some of these scooters who may uh, who have left who have been left on the sidewalk on their sides uh, or placed inappropriately after their use, um, and I think it's a cause for concern. Uh, especially as it relates to ADA compliance. I just want to make sure that, you know, especially as I'm thinking about corridors like Union, where there's limited sidewalk access already, um, and certainly um, some fast moving traffic alongside it. I think it's, a, um, it's something that we should take a look at. And so I, I would like to make a, um, a request for our city attorney to take a look at um, maybe some, some form or, or mechanism that we can utilize to uh, hold some of these companies accountable. If I may, council member, um, and always happy to defer on legal matters to the city attorney, but I think in some ways that's an operational consideration. We have the encroachment permit for the partners who are using those um, um, technologies or, or you know, the, the scooters and the bikes. Our encroachment permit set the rules by which they have to maintain those and set those up. I, I would say admittedly individuals using them, you know, and then placing them out, there's limited control, but we do ask the vendors to come through and charge and, and clean up and place those in very specific ways. We also have the ability to do um, geofencing, meaning uh, allow them to be in certain places and not other places if we came across a pattern of data that says, you know, they're, they're not working well in a certain geography, we could consider addressing that. So I think from an operational perspective, um, when Bird came to town, we had a very tight encroachment permit process that improved on the, the experiences historically. And we've had good experiences there. I know that we've recently had an influx of new scooters in town, and that's probably an opportunity for us to just review that with the, our new vendor. Uh, under their encroachment permit, and, w and we are watching closely the data about uh, um, usage and where they end up. And so if there are specific areas of challenge, we ask our residents to please uh, let us know. I'm not sure if that's um, an option available under our mobile app, 
but uh, we do ask for specifics so that we can work with our vendor to address them. Absolutely, and happy to, to bring those forward and, and work with our community. I know I've had some conversation with some local organizations uh, who are in touch with individuals who are experiencing these um, challenges. Uh, and I'm also open to uh, having a multi-pronged approach to this uh, from an operational standpoint and from a legal standpoint. I believe that the, based on my conversations with Ginny, that you know, the liability uh, lies and falls on the shoulders of uh, the individual vendors. Uh, but I think it's important that we continue to protect, protect the taxpayer dollar and make sure that we're reinforcing that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. For the last several months, I've been dealing with some significant health issues. And uh, the war still goes on, but uh, several battles have been won. And I am so appreciative of the, the prayers and support I've received from my colleagues, staff, and members of the public. And from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Council Member Parley. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. In light of recent legislation regarding teleconferencing, I am asking the city attorney to review the municipal code governing meetings and return with any revisions deemed appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anyone else? This has been a very challenging year and a half for our healthcare workers. And I just wanna do a special shout out in appreciation for all that they're doing and continue to do at tremendous sacrifice to themselves and their families. And we just encourage our public to express your gratitude in as many ways possible, just practical expressions to our healthcare workers, and let's continue to encourage them and thank them for their extraordinary efforts. And seeing none, uh, no other request to speak, we're adjourned at 618.